In this video, we're going to learn how to create a fun and dynamic text highlighter effect when we scroll. You can see the final result of the project here. As I scroll, you'll notice that certain parts of the text become highlighted in yellow. This effect will probably remind you of those Sharpie highlighters, you know, the ones that are fluorescent yellow, which students or readers use to call attention or mark up certain parts of the text that they find interesting or noteworthy. Now, HTML has an inbuilt tag called the mark tag, which creates this yellow highlighting effect. However, for this video, we're going to be creating it dynamically on scroll, and we're going to be doing so with GSAP scroll trigger. So let's get into it. So we'll start off here with our index.html file, and we've got some basic boilerplate going. You can see that within the body tags, we have two script tags, which bring in our GSAP library and our scroll trigger plugin. And then immediately following those script tags, we have our own script tag, which is pointing to app.js, which is going to be our custom JavaScript file. Another thing to note is that we're linking to a styles.css file, and you can see that here in the head section. And notice in the file explorer that I have those files created already and ready to go. Now within the body tags, I'm going to create a main tag, and this is going to hold all of our text content. I've created an H1 here, but that's really optional. The main thing is to create many paragraphs, because these paragraphs are going to hold all of our text content. And I'm creating many paragraphs so I can get a good amount of vertical scrolling height in the browser. The next thing that I'm going to do is wrap some of the text that I want to be highlighted with this marker effect in a pair of span tags. So I'm just going to randomly pick out some text. I'm going to grab something from the third paragraph. I'll wrap that in span tags. I'll grab some text from the fifth paragraph. And also some text from the seventh paragraph. At the moment, our browser text, it looks pretty sparse and bare-boned, and that's because we haven't set up any styling yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll open up our styles.css file, and I've already created some rules. Basically, what they're doing is serving to give some size and line height to the text, just to format it a bit, and also to center everything, the text and the main section, kind of center it in the middle of the viewport. Now that I think we're going to start to have some fun because we're going to use a CSS trick that we can do with linear gradients. So let's see how it works. What we're going to do is we're going to create a rule for the span tags. Now remember the span tags are the ones that we went into our paragraph text and we manually marked. Those are the ones that we're going to want highlighted. So in order to use a linear gradient, we're going to say background image, that's going to be the property, and then we're going to set that to a value of linear gradient. And then inside of here is where we pass what's called stops or color stops. And these are going to be the colors that we want for the linear gradient. The thing is though, for our trick to work, we're going to want to assign both of these color stops to the same color. You'll see why in a little bit, but for now we're going to make the first one yellow, and we'll make the second one yellow as well. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to use another background property, and that's called background size. And what we're going to do here, we're going to use what's called the two value syntax, which is going to allow us to set the width and the height. And we're going to set it initially, it's going to start out with width at zero or zero percent and height at 100 percent. And the reason that we're setting width to zero percent is because this is a property that we're going to be animating. Right, we're going to be animating the width to increase to 100%, and that's what's going to cause that dynamic, progressive highlighting effect. Now, if you want to get some clarity on how this works, I would suggest experimenting with the background size width. Like, for example, let's try setting it to 50%. But there's a little gotcha here, and let me show you what it is. If we look at the browser right now, even though we've set the width to 50%, that background color still seems to occupy 100% of the width. And that's because we need to set another property in our span tags, or our span rule, and that is the background repeat property. We want to set this to no repeat. Because if we don't set this, the default is for the background to repeat. And that's why we see it taking up 100% of the width. So now you'll see the difference. If we do set it to no repeat, when we look in the browser, that background width will actually be 50% and not 100%. Right, so we're going to set background repeat to be no repeat. Within the span rule, 
we're now going to use the transition property and we're going to set up a transition on the background size. So we're going to put background size and we'll have it transition for a duration of one second and we'll set an easing. We'll give it ease in. So note here that we're going to be doing our transition, which is going to be our animation with CSS. When we get to the JavaScript and scroll trigger part, we're just going to be using scroll trigger to toggle a class. And that class will have the background size with width at 100%. We'll be creating that class in a little bit. For now though, we want to manually test our transition animation. And we can do that by using span colon hover or the hover pseudo class. And what we'll do is we're going to set the background size. And now we're going to set the width to 100% and the height will be 100%. Right, so this is going to give that transition of width at 0 to 100%. And the height is 100% for the original span and the hover pseudo class because we're not doing anything with the height. It's just going to stay at 100% the whole time. Now I think we can move into our app.js and start working on our JavaScript and scroll trigger stuff. So let's open up app.js and the first thing that we're going to do is to register the scroll trigger plugin. And for that we do gsap.register plugin and we pass in scroll trigger. And make sure that you do a capital S and a capital T. Now what we want to do is we want to gather up all of those span tags that we created in our HTML and gsap gives us a handy utility method called toArray. So we can say gsap.utils.toArray and then we're going to pass in the element that we want to gather up into a flat JavaScript array. And this is going to allow us to use JavaScript's inbuilt for each method. So in the for each method, now we can set up our callback function, which is going to be used to iterate over each of the span elements. And what we're going to be doing for each iteration is we're going to be creating a standalone scroll trigger instance. And we do that using scroll trigger.create. So using a standalone scroll trigger instance is great when you want to do something like toggling a class or tapping into GSAP's event callback system. Inside of this call to scroll trigger.create, we want to pass in an object. And in here we're going to set up three different properties. The first one is going to be the trigger, and we're going to assign that to be the span. And then we're going to set a start property. And for this, we're going to set the value to be a string. The first part of the string is going to use the top keyword. The second part of the string is going to use the center keyword. So if you're not familiar with the start property from scroll trigger, what this is saying is that when the top of the trigger element, which is the span, when that meets the center of the viewport, that's when we want our class to be toggled. So speaking of toggling a class, the next property we're going to use is called toggle class. And what we're going to do is we're going to set this to a value of active and make sure it's a string. Now the name active is just the name that I'm making up, right? Your class name could be anything, but we'll call ours active. And what we're going to do is we're going to go back into our CSS. And if you remember before we were manually testing our highlighting effect using span colon hover, what we're going to do now is we're going to replace that with the active class because we want scroll trigger to take over the toggling of this class. Oh, snap. As a visual aid, I'd like to enable some scroll trigger markers in our app.js file. So let's come in here and let's say markers and we'll assign that a value of true. Now on the right side in the browser, we can see the start and the end points for each of the span elements. And we can also see the scroller start and the scroller end zone. Now if I start scrolling down, notice that when the start of the first span tag, for example, hits the scroller start, that is what's going to trigger the toggling of the class. And it's going to give us our highlighted background effect. And then as I continue to scroll down and each successive span tag meets the scroller start, we're going to see its corresponding yellow highlighted background animation. There's one thing that I'd like to change though. If I scroll in reverse, you might notice that the linear gradient's width reduces back to a value of zero. And this is because we are toggling a class. However, if we just want that active class to be applied when we enter the scroller zone, rather than toggling back to zero in reverse, what we can do is we can use a callback property called onEnter, and we can assign it to a function. What we're going to do in this function is we're going to be adding a class when the trigger element enters the scroller zone. 
So to do this, we can take that span and we can use classList.add. And then we'll pass it the active class. Now you can see when each of these spans enters the scroller zone, the class gets applied, but it doesn't reverse itself when we go in the opposite direction. By the way, I have a new course available on using GSAP and Scroll Trigger to really enhance your websites. In the course, we dive into a concept called scrolly telling. And if you haven't heard about scrolly telling, you're definitely going to want to check it out. You'll find the link down below in the description and the comments section. Now, if you haven't done so yet, also subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments down below what other GSAP or Scroll Trigger topics you'd like to see covered. See you next time.